You've probably seen some of these videos about how Fallout is shaping up to have a pretty insane 2024, one of the best years for the franchise in a while, and I mean, hey, even I kinda made one. But what is actually going on with all of that? What specifically is coming out, and when can we start to experience some of this new content? Because what you may have not realized is new Fallout questing content is already here, it's already dropped at least to some degree, and a bunch more content is likely right around the corner. What I believe was the big catalyst around all this movement for the Fallout franchise in 2024 is the Fallout TV show. This show looks phenomenal, and has the budget showrunners and even existing fan support to become a real hit. And I think Bethesda really wants to capitalize on that. Edge Runners basically transformed Cyberpunk 2077. The game was hitting a million players a day two years after release. And we're talking about one of the most controversial game releases in history here. For Cyberpunk, the anime not only helped reboot the game's image, but also helped garner an insane number of sales, especially with the Phantom Liberty expansion. Bethesda definitely noticed that, and we have already started to see big budget boots at conventions for the Fallout TV show, and even a show tie-in with some of their games, but more on the way, as the latest update around the Fallout TV show actually came from the most recent Fallout 76 update. Fallout 76 just had its public test server go back online, and within this, several posters for Cooper Howard films were labeled as Atomic Shop. Cooper Howard is one of the main characters with The Ghoul from the Fallout TV show. Before becoming a ghoul and the ghoul, Cooper Howard was an actor in some westerns, even a spokesperson for Vault Tech to some degree. So these posters are likely going to be a free claimable item in Fallout 76, or part of a larger bundle for money around the release of this show. And even more was found, some of the other things are a bit less obvious, but camp item tie-ins for Fallout 76 and even a Brotherhood of Steel light ally as well. But Fallout 76 is next update is also here, at least kind of. The next major update is dropping on March 26, just a couple of weeks before the TV show premieres. But in anticipation for that public release, it just went to testing on the public test server. And this is a pretty big one, because this is the first Fallout 76 update in a long time that I think a lot of you will actually care about. It adds in another Atlantic City themed expansion for Fallout 76, and you know, it's fine. More repeatable mission content, I honestly found this to be quite a bit less tedious compared to some of the other expeditions in the game, but it's still that same formula that you either enjoy or don't. But the other side of this update is where things are getting exciting. Fallout 76 is getting its first proper quest content in two and a half years. The last major quest line was Steel Rain, all the way back in July of 2021. But here we are, finally getting some new quests, which is kind of a big deal. So there's a new Atlantic City focused quest line. There's a group looking to open their own tavern in Appalachia, but we quickly find that they have a chem problem, and we're tasked with investigating this. During this, you're going to deal with mob members, clues around a new cryptid that may be involved in this quest line and you'll have this nice back and forth that takes you both to Atlantic City and to Appalachia. And you are in Atlantic City, so there are several games implemented for you to lose all of your caps at. And that actually isn't all. You can just travel to the expedition locations now to explore around if you want to, and even do some of the newly added side quests there or trade with some of the vendors. One of the new side quests is a pretty fun one. It's focused around the Atlantic City mob and a new Don taking over and our involvement with that. This is the first follow-up questing content of any kind, at least officially, that we've had in years. And honestly, it was pretty fun. Definitely worth giving a go if you already own Fallout 76, or even if you just have Game Pass. I would wait for the full release in a couple of months as opposed to just playing on the public test server. But the real exciting part about new quest content coming is this isn't the only new questing content we're getting for Fallout 76 in 2024. One of the things that's starting to get me more interested in this game overall is it seems like Fallout 76 right now is almost doing a dual team structure. So there's one team that works on one piece of content, like this new Atlantic City Part 2 update that we have in testing. While there's a separate team working on some other content, and in this case, that is the Southward map expansion coming later this year. We have this concept image, and it's described as an uncharted, once tranquil expanse in the heart of Virginia that will bring a new questline, factions, and rewards. I'm not exactly sure what to expect from this one, but the teaser image they share does a great job at getting me both curious and excited. My big issue with Fault 76 was a lack of content, but it really feels like in 2024, they're doing a full 180. We're getting a lot more content, at least early earlier in the year, but even beyond that, we're getting a healthy amount of questing content, which I know many Fallout fans have been craving. And looking at 2024 overall, I wouldn't be shocked if this is one of the biggest years for Fallout 76 compared to the past several. But looking back at the Fallout TV show, I really think people should be excited for this one. 
The show is dropping on April 12th, and the core premise is this show will take place in LA several years after the events of Fallout 4. And in this, you're going to have three very distinct people from the wasteland coming together to do something. One of them is a vault dweller named Lucy from Vault 33, but Vault 32 is also right nearby and connected in some way. Vault 32 is likely where we got this one-eyed Cyclops character from the trailer. We know Lucy's dad has something wrong with him, and that's what leads Lucy to leaving the vault in the first place, and her dad is the Vault 33 overseer. In addition, there's going to be Maximus a Brotherhood of Steel scribe, and also the Ghoul, a pre-war actor who gradually turned into a ghoul as the bombs dropped, but seemingly losing his entire family in the process. So you can start to see the format of this show. We're going to get these three very different perspectives of the wasteland until they eventually come together and tell a more defined story. And the Fall TV show is going to have a lot of familiar factions. The Brotherhood of Steel will of course be here. The current speculation is that this is the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel coming in to help the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel in their war with the NCR. From some past set photos, it looks like we have the Enclave and even some vault Tech scientists. We have seen some NCR signs and flags. There's a new subsidiary of vault Tech known as Hawthorne labs. But the thing that gets me most excited is just how accurate a lot of this is to Fallout 4. So much of what we've seen thus far looks almost identical to what we have in game, even just down to this red rocket sign being literally the same. Thus far, I think it was pretty intentional for them showing so many similarities between this show and Fallout 4, so it builds our hype. We see the real-life versions of things we've been seeing for years now. But at the same time, the Fall TV show will be carving out its own path. The showrunners mention how they concepted this as a Fallout 5, a new story in the franchise and Todd Howard is executive producing here. Right now we have the release date, but I think we'll find out more in just a few days. The Super Bowl is on February 12th, and the last five years in a row, Prime Video has had a major trailer there, so I think this year we're going to get a major new trailer for the Fallout TV show, and I also would expect to see them at PAX East in March. It seems like a prime marketing opportunity for both Amazon and Bethesda. The Fallout 4 Next Gen update is just weird. This was announced all the way back in October of 2022. Fallout 4 will get a free Next Gen update at some point in 2023, and it would come with some cool new features for the game. And like, sure, Fallout 4 getting a Next Gen update is a modern sized deal. It's not like it's a crazy big thing, not a new Fallout game, but Fallout 4 still has a very active community with hundreds of thousands of current players. And I mean, even just looking at this objectively, Fallout 4 has more players than Fallout 76 on Xbox, which of course is Fallout 76's most popular platform. So as such, we've seen a lot of people very excited and anticipating this Fallout 4 next-gen update. But with that context in mind, it does seem pretty weird that then Bethesda announced the next-gen version six paragraphs deep into an otherwise unrelated article just about the Fallout anniversary, and then from that point forward, they literally never mentioned it again until over a year later, two weeks before their own deadline would hit, but Bethesda finally broke their silence to tell us that the update is delayed into 2024. The whole situation to me was just kind of bizarre, but I think I know why this all happened. I fully suspect that the scope of the Fallout 4 Next Gen version may have grown during this time. The first entry we could see for the Fallout 4 Next Gen update was this Beta 2 depot on SteamDB, and this was added all the way back in July of 2022. SteamDB tracks all of the changes made to games listed on Steam, including some behind the scenes stuff like files being uploaded and worked on. But this is all Bethesda, it's not like random users can access this. Early on, not much was happening. There was months between movements for this Beta 2 branch, and this was even during that time where we got the New Vegas 2 upload that was deleted shortly thereafter. There's been a ton of speculation on what this New Vegas 2 thing was, people wondering if it was some kind of remake or even a New Vegas themed DLC for Fallout 4, but honestly, there's no evidence for either of those things, and I think the most probable explanation is there was just a developer at Bethesda doing some trolling. Although, this is right around when things started to actually happen with the Fallout 4 Next Gen update. It was on April 19th, 2023, the Day Trico branch is added to SteamDB. Day Trico is the name of an Italian surrealist painter, perhaps that's related, but I have no idea how. And the reason this is all relevant is, from this point forward, Fallout 4 saw movement on a daily basis. Basically, every single day of the week, outside of weekends, something was being edited for this branch. That goes all the way up until November, where we see just two changes and then only one in December. But now with January, we are back to daily progress. The actual features advertised as a part of the next-gen patch were performance mode features for high frame rates, quality features for 4K resolution gameplay, bug fixes, and even bonus Creation Club content. Based on the sheer amount of dev time that has gone into this, with people working on it almost every single day of the week for almost an entire year, I just have to suspect that they added more, and honestly, it makes sense. What I heard was that Bethesda ran out of QA while wrapping up Starfield, so as a result, other projects had to be pushed back. Skyrim paid mods or creations got several internal delays because nobody could test it, and a similar reality likely came to the Fallout 4 next-gen patch. 
But then, if you don't have the manpower to test this for 2023, a 2024 release becomes a lot more interesting. Tie it in even more directly to the TV show and even release it right around the same time as the TV show, since there's going to be so much interest in the game anyway. And I think that's kind of what happened. Perhaps it started as a relatively small and minor free update and eventually started to grow into something a bit larger. And I expect we'll hear more soon. The TV show is dropping on April 12th, and I suspect the next-gen update will drop right around that same time. And even another little nugget to add on top of all of this, Bethesda has a plethora of high-quality Fallout 4 content just sitting in the vault. Creation Club abruptly ended back in late 2019, but work was being done on things for Creation Club up to early 2021, so that bonus Creation Club content should be pretty cool and a little cherry on top content-wise for this new update. And even beyond that, you have to imagine some TV show content will be added just like what we have for Fallout 76. But of course, the big question is whether Fallout 4 is getting a paid mod system of its own like Skyrim and Starfield. As of right now, I have no idea and I haven't heard anything, but maybe. But one of the big unknowns going forward to the Fallout franchise is this Fallout 3 remake, if it's even still happening at all. This popped up on a leaked Bethesda roadmap. This is used during the buyout negotiations with Microsoft. Bethesda was laying out their upcoming slate of games, but a very important consideration is this was made in July of 2020. So very early into the pandemic and just generally quite a few years ago now this was created. Microsoft accidentally leaked this earlier this year, and it has been surprisingly accurate thus far. As of right now, when you account for game delays and the like, we are firmly in fiscal year 22. Indiana Jones is coming later this year, Starfield DLC is very likely coming this year, and there are even separate rumors of the Oblivion remaster coming this year also. So assuming this timeline holds true, that would mean a Fallout 3 remaster is two years away, dropping in 2026. But I wouldn't just take this at face value. Predicting two years into the future is one thing. Most of these projects were likely already underway for this 2022 area. Predicting four years into the future, like what they were doing while they were modeling the Fallout 3 remaster, is far more ambitious. And of course, in that process, Bethesda was bought by Microsoft right after this roadmap was made. So Microsoft may have changed nearly all of these plans, especially if development on many of these later projects hadn't even begun yet. And that could be either a good or bad thing. Maybe Microsoft wants a Fallout 3 remaster even sooner, or maybe they want it even later or just canceled it altogether. As of right now, there really isn't anything pointing towards this happening or not. We've had several false flag rumors of a Fallout 3 remake over the last few years, but nothing credible. And that's really all we know. The most credible rumor is on the Oblivion remaster. Supposedly, this is going to be using two separate engines. The visuals will be largely an Unreal Engine 5, while what you feel will be a part of Gamebryo, the original Oblivion engine. And if that ends up being a success for Oblivion, you have to imagine the Fallout 3 remaster will use a similar format. And of course, just in general, if we see an Oblivion remaster release later this year, how that performs would likely inform quite a bit about the Fallout 3 remaster, lots of sales could mean an even bigger budget for the follow-up. But then there of course is the big one, with Fallout 5. Right now is probably a big moment for Fallout 5, but Bethesda internally is very likely making some large decisions over what's to come with this game, and we may start to see some answers around that soon. As of right now, what we actually know about Fallout 5 is, Bethesda has a one-pager on the game, a rough outline of what it'll entail, likely meaning a location has been picked, which I think could be notable. We heard how they almost did Fallout 4 in New York. Fallout 5 being an epic next-gen title with an expansive post-apocalyptic New York does feel pretty exciting. At one point, Todd Howard stated that Fallout 5 would be the next game after the Elder Scrolls 6, but a couple of years after that, he updated his statement clarifying that Fallout 5 will come at some point from Bethesda Game Studios, but it may not be the next title after the Elder Scrolls 6. And that clarification, the updated statement, just kind of left things wide open, because the reality is our knowledge of Bethesda is almost non-existent right now. A few years ago, we were able to predict down to the day when Bethesda would drop a new trailer for a game if there was a new game coming that year. But after Starfield, all of this changed. Their longest developed game, and they literally paused development on Starfield to wrap up Fallout 76. Then we also got a pandemic, a buyout, and several major names leaving the company. The Elder Scrolls 6 might be five years away, it could be eight, or maybe it'll be a shocking drop in just two. We're in this very weird transitionary phase with Bethesda, and it's very likely that over the next couple of years, we'll learn a lot more about timelines and progress, which will inform us about what is going on with Fallout 5. Because right now, we don't really know anything, and for a Bethesda game, we likely know less than we did a few years ago. But just from a financial perspective, I can't imagine Microsoft lets this go for that long. They 
want this IP to stay active and regardless of who makes it, Fallout 5 is going to sell a lot of copies. There have been rumors of another developer stepping in, whether this be a Fallout 5 or just a spin-off game isn't really clear. We heard Jeff Grubb talk about how Obsidian was in discussions around a Fallout game, and even Dealer Gaming claimed In Exile was working on some kind of Fallout in Unreal Engine, but if anything, that sounds closer to a Fallout 3 remaster using two engines than a Fallout 5. But at least to me, it just doesn't seem realistic that we're waiting till the mid-2030s for the next Fallout game. I have to imagine at some point Microsoft steps in and makes something happen. And in reality, the next Fallout game or Fallout game-like experience you'll have probably won't come from anyone at Xbox or Bethesda. Instead, it'll come from modders. Fallout London is shaping up to be a game-sized experience, touting 1.5 times the voice lines of Skyrim and a map the size of Fallout 4's Commonwealth and Far Harbor combined. If you're interested in learning more about that project, check out this video on the epic upcoming mod.